Right guys, this video is going to be about some of the most impactful talents in the game for minis that turn them from a very mediocre unit to something that could be like S plus tier. Um, and I want to talk about those in depth. So we're going to look at the minis, we're going to look at what that talent does for them and why it makes them so good. But if you're interested in sort of like which talents for every mini in the game, I have made a really awesome free to access spreadsheet, which the link will be in the description. It's also on my Discord. You can go on there and you can look at any mini in the game and you can look at the talent talent recommendation for the first talent you get when you get to, when it gets to uncommon. And all of those recommendations I think are based in research as well as experience. And hopefully, if you follow that guide, you won't end up with a bad talent on a mini. Now, I know some of you might look at this list and say, but you haven't included Baron in there, for instance. Baron has actually got multiple good talents. Um, Chill of the Grave is good and Death Pact is good, depending on the type of Baron deck that you want to play. So what the kind of minis that I'm focusing on in this list are the minis that are completely transformed by the talent that you pick for them. It, it turns them into a really viable mini from something that was just kind of okay before. Um, there is some, you know, I guess as you go through the list, you might disagree with me. Like, for instance, Blizzard is probably okay without its talent. Earth Elemental is certainly decent without its talent. And Quillbore is still very serviceable without its. But I'm, I've picked them because, you know, they are minis that if you get the talent for, you will you will feel a noticeable impact in terms of changing the way that they're able to play. They unlock new avenues for you. Um, and, and that's why I've included them. So, yeah. There are definitely minis in here that obviously they have really impactful talents, like Baron especially, but Baron has multiple good talents. The, the minis that I'm including here are you know, talents that I think that you should buy and it should be the only talent that you use rather than the other talents that exist for them. So that's why I've made the choices that I've made. But for this video, we are focusing on some of the most impactful. I'm going to start off with everyone's favorite unit. It's used pretty, in pretty much every deck that's ever existed, Safe Pilot. Uh, the reason Safe Pilot is so good is Gnomish Cloaking Device. Without Gnomish Cloaking Device, Safe Pilot is actually quite mediocre. And the reason is that when Safe Pilot drops onto the field, she immediately draws aggro from the closest enemy and she's not particularly tanky. So obviously the way that you use Safe Pilot is to do maximum damage impact on the enemy. And that usually means landing Safe Pilot right in the middle of as many enemies as possible, which usually then means she's going to die. Gnomish Cloaking Device means that when she lands, she is automatically stealthed, and that means that she'll charge up at least one shot, which helps her trade versus other minis that she wouldn't usually be able to trade versus. For instance, if you don't have Gnomish Cloaking Device, you usually can't trade up versus a Necromancer, because the Necromancer will kill you before the safe pilot is able to actually get their second or get their actual first hit off. So with Gnomish Cloaking Device, you can trade up versus Necromancer almost every time, and that is a positive gold trade, because... Uh, safe pilot is three gold and necromancer is four gold and then usually if you've correctly placed it safe pilot may even survive and which is obviously fantastic i'm going to show you this in action now just to show you exactly what it does so you can see that before making the purchase so we have an example here you'll see the raptors i'm going to drop the safe pilot on the raptors heads and she'll get a second shot off if we did not have the gnomish cloaking device safe pilot would have been the target for the raptors and they might not have killed her to be fair but let's say that this was a slightly more impactful unit. The safe pilot may have been immediately killed by the raptors in that situation. And that's exactly what makes this talent so utterly impactful for safe pilot. It's just a ridiculously strong talent that then allows her to even start doing damage to other things if she survives. In that case, chipped off about a tenth of the HP of the Devil Saw Queen, which has really been really impactful. So the next talent is... Well pegs with flame burst, and I cannot tell you how flame burst turns what is essentially a B tier unit into probably one of the best units in the game, and that's because flame burst just does too much damage in its current state, and I fully expect this to get nerfed. But it's the only reason that well pegs remain so popular. It is an unbelievable talent that essentially allows you to nuke the back line and then also spawn three flying units, which continue to nuke things on the back line as well. Without a doubt, one of the most important talents in the game. Both Gnomish Cloaking Device and Flame Burst are my top two talents that you need to get for your minis to make yourself competitive in PvP, but also to actually have a big impact in PvE. I use both of these minis in both PvE and PvP because these talents are just so busted. So let's show you what this looks like in practice. So I'm going to show you the example right now. I'm going to show you to use it to try and blow up these guys. Um, one second, I'm going to, I actually want my... Um, yeah, so yeah, I'm going to show you to blow up these guys right here. I drop the well pegs. Just show you how unbelievably broken this is. They'll turn around and look. Look. 
I mean, I know I'm a slightly higher level, but that happens even at even levels. It just blew up all of those units. It's like an, it's like a, a a very targeted fireball almost on on your, on the enemy backline, and it, it's not only just used for that. I'm going to show you the other context that it can be used in as well. Um, I'll try and cycle round to it eventually. But it's even used useful for drawing enemy aggro from the boss. You know, I, I know you've probably seen me play levels where I've used like Earth Elemental or, or Quillbore to draw aggro from the boss. But you can do it with uh, with well pegs as well. It's it's really really strong for that for that reason. Um, I'll show you just now. All right, Ken has died. Hopefully, I get to um, the gold I need. I just drop this behind. Watch. It'll turn around like that. Draw aggro. You can use it to draw aggro, and it does a decent amount of chunk damage to the boss as well. It's absolutely fantastic for that reason. Uh, and yeah, very, very, very strong talent, and one of the best talents in the game, if I'm completely honest with you. The next talent that I want to talk about is Earth Elemental. Now, Earth Elemental has got a couple of talents that are okay. So, for instance, Ready to Rumble, Taunt and Deploy is definitely all right. But for the most part, if you're playing Earth Elemental correctly, you're usually going to draw aggro without the need for it to taunt. So Obsidian Shard, for me, is one of the most impactful talents that this unit can have. Now, Earth Elemental is not a great in PvP, but in PvE, he's an absolute boss. You know, most of the PvE maps have standard physical damage towers. Earth Elemental is armoured and can be deployed anywhere, which allows you to very quickly take towers. He also deals siege damage, which is great against structures as well. And he's a great boss tanker because a lot of bosses deal physical damage too. Really, I used Earth Elemental all the way through the campaign because of just how good this unit is at dealing with objectives on the map, especially when combining it with something like Harpies. An Obsidian Shard gives you two to three extra seconds worth of tanking once uh, Earth Elemental dies, which can be super crucial. Really, really can be crucial. And an example of that is on my free-to-play account. I couldn't do Gore Claw. I bought Obsidian Shard, and then I was very easily able to do good Gore Claw because I could get Harpies, those crucial extra seconds to deal the DPS necessary to kill the boss. And that's why I think this talent is an absolute must-have if you're looking to progress the PvE campaign. And just about when he's, uh, he's got, he did actually get tagged by that Murloc. They always have like an extended range. But yeah, we've killed that Murloc now, and now it doesn't matter. The Ren's going to continue to go in on this boss. And you can see it dies, and it splits into two extra little, two extra little uh, um, Obsidian shards, which has now allowed my friend enough time to kill the boss. And it just gave what two or three extra seconds, and those two to three extra seconds can be really crucial in those clutch PVE moments. And that's why this uh, this unit is so good and why that particular talent, I think, is just so good as well. The next one that I want to talk about is a spell talent and it's Blizzard. Blizzard has got, if I show you, three talents. Summons additional Blizzard at your base. Enemies take 30% extra physical damage when they are in the Blizzard. But also, the most important one, in my opinion, is Cold Snap, freeze enemy troops in place. Um, Ice Crown has its place versus certain decks. Brittle Ice is very situational. You have to run a physical deck primarily. Um, it works well with some units quite nicely, like Huntress, but that's a very expensive combo to run. The reason that Cold Snap is so good, however, is that normally units can walk through Blizzard, albeit very slowly. Cold Snap locks them in place where you cast the Blizzard and forces them to take the full amount of damage, which... Might not seem like a big deal because if you catch someone at the start of the blizzard as they're walking through it or in the middle they're usually going to take quite a bit of the damage in the first place but what this does allow you to do is catch units that are on the edge walking out of the blizzard and they will be stood at the edge of that blizzard taking the full amount of damage just ensuring you get maximum value from this spell it's why i rate this talent so highly as a must-have and i'm going to show you in action now as well so I'm going to show you here if it doesn't immediately kill all of them. I'll wait for them to start moving. They get stuck, and then people walk into it and get stuck, and they take the full damage. Huntress is now stuck outside of the range of my tower, taking full damage. She can't actually attack the tower, can't move, and then immediately gets blown up. It's just a great talent for Blizzard, and I think massively improved the spell overall. The last talent that I want to talk about is Quillbore with Tunnel Vision. Now, Quillbore does have some other usable talents like Bristleback, uh, and also the other one that I can't remember the name of, Bramble Burst. But they're not particularly good. And the reason I like Quillbore with Tunnel Vision is it in massively increases his deploy speed. Not only meaning that he can start attacking the units that he starts tanking earlier, but also can get onto chests quicker, can get, start attacking towers more quickly. I think I saw a video and it shows that you can get two and a half, two and a half attacks in before the Quillbore without the talent would have actually unburrowed. 
So I just really rate it for that reason. And I think it's one of the most important talents on Quillbore because of the speed of reaction it grants you. Quillbore is supposed to be a reactionary unit. It's supposed to be something that is deployed at low cost to, to, to get you out of a clutch moment. And that's why I think Tunnel Vision is so much more important than the other talents because it, it, it really aids that clutch feeling of playing Quillbore. What I'm going to do now is going to show you the difference between Quillbore without a talent and Quillbore with a talent. So let me see if I can find a deck where I've got Quillbore actually equipped. Here we go. My Hogger deck. I'm going to take the talent off and we'll quickly jump into a fight. And I'll show you Quillbore without the talent versus Quillbore with the talent. And we'll show you them side by side to show you the unburrowing speed versus when you have the actual talent equipped. So I'm going to show you now on the, on the tower. And burrows and burrows and one two okay so that is it without the talent and then i'll show you with the talent and then we'll do it side by side right now i'm going to show you it with the talent the same thing uh, get the point that i was funny that the ai plays exactly the same way isn't it and here's with the talent significantly quicker we'll do it side by side and see how many basic attacks you get in before uh you miss out on the um you know before the how many basic attacks you would actually miss if you uh, didn't have the talent equipped you can see that the talented quillboard gets one two attacks in before the untalented quillboard is able to do the same which can really help trade up versus certain matchups the next mini that i think has a talent that completely changes the way that they play is frostwolf shaman uh this allows Frostwolf Shaman to grant armored to a nearby ally. Ally? Ally? Ally. <laughs> Gosh, it's getting late. That, to me, is game-changing in terms of deck creation capabilities. That turns Frostwolf Shaman from a very mediocre unit, in my opinion, that has a good heal but a very crap attack, into something that completely changes the way you build a deck. You've probably seen my um, Fire Elemental Frostwolf Shaman video where you give fire elemental armored it becomes armored and resistant and that is super powerful armored i cannot stress enough is such an unbelievably good perk it is a 50 percent physical damage reduction if you give a unit 50 percent physical damage reduction to elemental and armored that is 50 percent damage reduction to practically everything in the game it doubles their health pool and i'll use the example of uh fire elemental just for you my fire elemental has 11,053 HP, which is a lot. Um, if you compare that to the likes of like Molten Giant and Abomination, they're both in that region. Abomination has the most in the game, but it doesn't get armored or uh, resistant, whereas uh, uh, Molten Giant has about 12,000 at the level that it's at right now, but it is armored. So Fire Elemental, if you grant it armored and resistant, essentially gets a 22,000 HP pool versus everything in the game, um, which is more than Abomination, and for two, you know, a cost of two less, and still has the AoE potential, and also has an Immolation Aura that does more damage than the Abomination's Poison Aura. So you can start to see why adding Frostwolf Shaman into the mix with Fire Elemental is a very, very good idea. So I'm going to show, I don't need to show you that in action, because um, you can go and have a look at that in the video, uh, but that's just sort of explaining to you as to what I think is such an impactful talent for a unit like Frostwolf Shaman. The next talent that I want to talk about is Hogger, who I <laughs> have at Epic right now. Um, there is definitely some something to say about fatal frenzy and spoiled meat but i just don't think they come anywhere close to ham hock hoggle is a hogger is a cycle unit and to gain 10 percent max health every single time he's played which i assume is compound is absolutely fantastic it is it plays exactly into his play style it makes him tankier as he goes as well which just if you don't know that he gains attack speed and movement speed every time he's played but to gain 10 percent extra ha health makes him infinitely more uh, powerful in terms of increasing his overall damage output so it is a talent that i think is necessary for hogger to make him work in decks especially necessary to play hogger decks and i think if you don't have that talent you'll end up struggling just a little bit as you progress with hogger again no need to show you this particular talent in action because you can't really feel the hp increase but trust me it is massive for this unit and is a very very impactful talent you've probably seen me use this particular unit on my videos but i can't tell you how and, and actually you can go and look at the video that i did yesterday the old murkai deck video i cannot tell you how without this talent this unit is very subpar very easy to counter very easy to deal with with this talent this unit becomes a real menace that requires an answer 
and usually requires a very fast answer. And combining that with the smoke bomb can make a very, very difficult set of units to actually deal with. I'm going to show you this talent in action right now, but I will tell you without a shadow of a doubt, Rocket Power Turbo Boots is the best talent for Goblin Sapper, and it changes this unit in terms of how it's played, but also gives it the fast trait, which allows you to slot it into different decks as well. So just absolutely love this. Let's have a look at it in action. Guys, go crazy. Look straight past the... He's pushing the back. <laughs> He's pushed the Quilmer all the way back. Oh... <laughs> uh... The next talent is Pyroblast on Pyromancer. Now, I actually do think that Conflagrate is also pretty decent, but Pyroblast allows this three cost to trade up when placed really nicely. A triple damage first attack can absolutely blast through certain units. Um, and it, I think really makes this, this unit a fantastic include, especially as a defensive unit when trying to protect your own base. Um, it's something that I rate super highly for Pyromancer, despite the, the splash area being doubled. I actually think there is a better call for having that first attack. Now, obviously, sometimes you can waste it, but that's why it comes down to skill and using the Pyromancer in the best possible location. I'm going to show you this in action now versus Hogger, um, and you'll see just how much damage it can actually do. Like, that just burnt almost all of Hogger's HP off compared to its normal basic attacks. That just allowed my Pyromancer to trade up versus Hogger, and it just shows you just how quite like, impactful that particular talent can actually be, especially on the defensive. The final talent that I want to talk about is Warsong Raiders Raising Focus, which for me personally is an absolutely fantastic talent in terms of changing the, what this unit does. It turns from being like a pretty mediocre tank that has good turret damage, don't get me wrong, but can get stopped very easily by plenty of units into essentially what is Warcraft Rumble's version of a Hog Rider, where it just runs at an enemy tower and will take it regardless of what happens. And that's what I think is really awesome about Warsong Raider. It ignores unit coll collision and runs straight at the tower. And I'll quickly, very quickly show that off to you so you can see what it does in game. So it kind of works the same with the bosses. I'm just going to show you what uh, this happens. You can see my Raider runs just past it, ignores the Huntress completely, running straight for the goal of the boss. And we'll do that. And it just kind of changes the way the unit works. Not much else to show you on this particular level, but I just wanted to show you it in action of the ignoring the unit collision. And on PvP, that's really good for uh, running at the towers and stuff like that. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. And uh, yeah, those are all the talents that I would personally recommend. Now, I know that I haven't talked about some of the units in the game that have really strong talents like Baron, etc. But the reason I haven't touched on them is, as I said at the start of the video, there, there are some units that have got multiple good talents. Um, and so therefore I'm not going to sort of say that they're the most impactful talents because actually that that leader could have one of two talents that could really work well for them depending or that unit could have uh, talents that really work well for them depending on the situation these are just talents for some minis that I think are the best talent for them and the other ones are actually just bad so that's why I've chosen to um, uh, to make this particular list some might say well blizzard's not a particularly good spell but actually i think it's the best control spell in the game it's just that we don't see it all that often I do think there's a place for it in the meta with old murkai being so good but that's for a, another day another discussion anyway guys hope you enjoyed feel free to subscribe and like if you did and i will see you very soon